Imagine getting money in your bank account each month without lifting a finger or paying any taxes. Sounds too good to be true? Welcome to the concept of Universal Basic Income, or UBI. Today, we're diving deep into the world of UBI, answering key questions and revealing truths you may not have heard about. So let's start. What is Universal Basic Income, UBI? Universal Basic Income, or UBI, is a socioeconomic model where everyone in a society, regardless of their social, economic, or employment status, is given a fixed, regular sum of money. This isn't a loan or a reward. It's a right. It's a radical departure from traditional forms of welfare, which are often means-tested, that is, dependent on income or circumstance. With UBI, whether you're a millionaire or unemployed, you receive the same amount. This concept has ancient roots, but it's been gaining a lot of attention recently, particularly in the face of growing income inequality and concerns about job automation. Its goal? To ensure every citizen has enough money to cover basic needs, thus providing a foundation of financial security. UBI aims to simplify welfare systems and reduce bureaucracy. It also poses as a potential solution for several other social issues. For instance, it could help eliminate absolute poverty, increase bargaining power for workers, and provide people the flexibility to return to school or spend more time with family. How does UBI really work? Imagine if every single person in your country got a check each month from the government. No strings attached, no questions asked. This money isn't meant to be a full salary or to make everyone rich. Rather, it's designed to cover basic living expenses, things like food, rent, and health care. The key idea behind UBI is to ensure that no one falls below the poverty line. So, where does this money come from? The money for universal basic income primarily comes from the country's government and its resources. The funds are often sourced from one of three places. Taxes. The government might increase certain types of taxes or implement new ones to fund UBI. This could include taxes on income, wealth, corporate profits, financial transactions, or even carbon emissions. The idea is often to have wealthier individuals and corporations contribute more to support the broader population. Reallocating existing budget. The government might choose to decrease spending in certain areas and redirect that money towards UBI. This could include reducing funding for certain welfare programs, defense spending, or administrative costs. For example, some proponents of UBI suggest that it could replace certain welfare programs, thereby reducing the cost and complexity of those programs. Sovereign Wealth Funds Some countries like Norway or the United Arab Emirates have large sovereign wealth funds often derived from natural resources like oil. These funds can be used to pay for a UBI. For example, the U.S. state of Alaska has been providing a form of basic income, known as the Alaska Permanent Fund to its residents from its oil revenues. These are the primary sources, but the exact method a country might use to fund a UBI can vary greatly, depending on its economic circumstances, political climate, societal values, and a range of other factors. It's important to note that implementing UBI requires careful consideration and balancing of a country's resources and needs. Can UBI trigger inflation? The potential impact of universal basic income, UBI, on inflation is a topic of ongoing debate among economists and policymakers. One perspective is that giving everyone a basic income would increase the amount of money that people have to spend. As a result, demand for goods and services might increase faster than the ability to supply them, which could lead to price inflation. However, this scenario assumes that businesses wouldn't increase their supply in response to increased demand which is not typically how markets operate. Businesses usually respond to increased demand by producing more, employing more people, and innovating to become more efficient. All these actions can help prevent inflation. Another perspective is that UBI would simply be a reallocation of existing money rather than the creation of new money. In this case, UBI wouldn't directly lead to inflation because the total amount of money in the economy wouldn't change. If UBI is funded by taxes, for example, then money is just being transferred from one group to another, not created out of thin air. Furthermore, if UBI were to replace certain welfare programs, 
It could reduce the administrative costs associated with those programs, creating further efficiencies. That being said, the relationship between UBI and inflation is complex and dependent on many factors, including how UBI is implemented, how businesses and individuals react, and how monetary policy is managed. When will universal basic income start? There have been numerous pilot programs and experiments in various countries to explore the benefits and challenges of UBI, but none have adopted it as a nationwide policy. The timeline for a UBI implementation will vary greatly from country to country and will depend on political will, economic conditions, public sentiment, and a host of other factors. For instance, the idea of UBI has been proposed and debated in many countries, including the United States, Canada, Finland, and India, but progress varies widely. In recent years, the concept has gained increased attention due to concerns about income inequality, job loss due to automation, and the economic impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. Some jurisdictions are running pilot programs to study the effects of UBI, which could influence broader policy decisions in the future. However, it's important to note that implementing a UBI involves significant logistical, economic, and political challenges. It would require substantial funding, potentially significant changes to tax structures or other forms of government revenue, and it would need to navigate complex political debates. Many experts believe that the idea of UBI will not be fully implemented until the advancements of AI take over most of our jobs, and this will not happen before 2030. The Dark Side of UBI While the universal basic income concept offers many benefits, it also has potential downsides that form its dark side. Here are some of the most often discussed issues. Number 1. Dependency on government One of the main criticisms is that UBI could lead to a greater dependency on the government. If people are provided with a basic income without any conditions, it might disincentivize them from seeking employment or striving to improve their economic condition. Number two, potential for exploitation. There's a concern that businesses could exploit UBI as a way to justify not paying livable wages, knowing that their employees have a safety net. Similarly, landlords might increase rents, knowing that people have a guaranteed income. Number three, cost and funding. The cost of implementing a UBI is substantial. This could lead to higher taxes, increased government debt, or cuts to other important services such as healthcare or education. Number four, universal versus targeted assistance. Some critics argue that it's more effective to provide targeted support to those who need it most, rather than providing the same amount to everyone. For instance, $1,000 per month might mean a lot to a low-income individual, but it's relatively insignificant for someone with a high income. Number five, potential for political manipulation. With a UBI in place, there's a risk that it could be manipulated for political purposes. For instance, politicians could promise increases in UBI payments as a way to gain votes, potentially leading to unsustainable fiscal policies. Number six, doesn't address all forms of inequality. UBI addresses income inequality, but doesn't necessarily solve other forms of inequality like access to healthcare, quality education, or affordable housing. These systemic issues might still persist even with a UBI in place. It's important to note that while these challenges are significant, they are not insurmountable. Many proponents of UBI argue that with careful policy design, many of these potential problems could be mitigated. However, the complexities involved mean that it's crucial to continue researching and pilot testing UBI initiatives to fully understand their implications. And that leads to our final question. Is UBI a good or bad idea? As with many complex issues, the answer is not black and white, but nestled in various shades of gray. Proponents of UBI argue that it provides a safety net for everyone, reducing stress and anxiety associated with financial instability. The economic landscape is changing rapidly, with automation and artificial intelligence threatening jobs across various sectors. In such a scenario, a UBI can act as a buffer allowing people the freedom to retrain or adapt to new careers without worrying about their basic needs. Furthermore, advocates say that UBI could unleash human potential by giving people the opportunity to pursue creative or entrepreneurial endeavors
that they couldn't risk under current economic structures. In essence, they argue, UBI could lead to a flourishing of innovation and a more humane society. However, critics raise serious concerns. One of the most common arguments against UBI is the potential disincentive to work. If people are given money with no strings attached, will there be a segment of society that opts out of the workforce? And if so, is this necessarily a bad thing? Or could it result in a healthier society with more focus on family, community, and personal development? Then comes the massive issue of cost. Implementing a UBI that provides everyone with a living wage would be extraordinarily expensive. Would it mean drastic tax increases, deep cuts to other vital services, or both? And would the proposed benefits justify this significant reshuffling of resources? The jury is still out on these questions. Small-scale experiments have been conducted, and these can give us some insights. But they can't paint the full picture of what a nationwide or even worldwide implementation of UBI would look like. In conclusion, the question of whether UBI is a good or a bad idea can't be definitively answered. It's a compelling concept that has the potential to drastically reshape our societies, for better or for worse. As the conversation evolves, it is critical to consider the nuance and potential unintended consequences that implementing such a policy on a large scale could have. So, what do you think of UBI? Are you for or against the idea of giving free money to everyone? Leave your honest opinion in the comment section below. If you have made it this far, comment down below with the word 100% to confirm that you have received the knowledge from this video. For more interesting topics, make sure you watch the recommended video that you see on the screen right now. Thanks for watching.